morning. My name is Barry Tillman, the University of Florida peanut breeder. I'm glad to be with you, with you to talk a little bit about the Florida varieties that we have out and those that are on the horizon. We, just to give you an idea of how we're, um, and if you go by our booth, you can see that we have a, a sheet like this. It gives you some detailed information on how to grow these varieties. So I won't go through all this other than to point out that we're looking at um, uh, these different characteristics, pod yield, grade, seed size, maturity, growth habit, adaptation, disease management. Sorry, sorry. Can you hear me better now? Uh, disease management and the overall management strategy so that basically you can have an idea when you look at one of these varieties how it's, it's bet, how to best position it for um, your growing conditions. So um, basically one of the areas that, that they differ quite a lot in is disease resistance. If you look at that, um, that second from the bottom group there, this area here, you can see that in disease management, we look at the different um, diseases, the three primary ones, spotted wilt, and I agree with Dr. Branch, this disease has not gone away, even though it certainly looks like we've had less disease pressure over the last several years, the disease has not gone away. Very important to make sure that you follow all the, the peanut RX management criteria for minimizing that disease. So looking at these varieties, the Flora 107 is what we call moderately resistant. It has a 20 point on the index. We would suggest avoid, avoid planting uh, prior to May 1, and if you do, you certainly need to include all the other characteristics of the peanut RX that are important, the thymet, four seeds per foot, and twin rows if possible, and making sure that you get um, uh, that four plants per foot up. Uh, in terms of white mold, the 107 is um, born in the susceptible category, and using those fungicides that uh, have very good activity against uh, white mold is important. It's very similar to uh, O6G in that category in our tests. The leaf spot is also susceptible. We would encourage farmers to use uh, fungicides that have both systemic and protective activity when uh, managing that variety. So it's done quite well in intensively managed situations uh, with this variety. Uh, those that are intended to maximize pod yield. And just to look at a little bit of our data, this is all data from 2010 through 2014 from Florida. And we compare these uh, varieties in tests with where they are um, in the same test together. So there were a total of 77 tests. You see here 77 tests where these varieties were compared, Georgia 6G and Fluorone 107. And about 38% of those tests, Fluorone 107 was equal to or greater than Georgia 6G for yield. Um, you can see there the grade numbers, a little bit lower in grade for 107, and a simply smaller seed size for 107. So one of those characteristics too that would save you a little bit of money in terms of planting costs with 107 over these larger seeded varieties. We did the same thing comparing with Florida 07, and we use those two varieties in our tests, the 06G and the Florida 07, because they tend to be the highest yielding, so we're comparing our uh, newer varieties to those. And the 107 was um, equal to or greater than Florida 07 in terms of yield in about half the test, 54% of those 42 tests, uh, it was um, equal to or better than. A little bit higher grade uh, with 107 compared to Florida 07, and again, the smaller seed size. And the smaller seed size, of course, depending on the cost, could save as much as $28 per acre in planting cost. So it is a significant cost savings and cost factor, especially when you're looking at the price of, of um, the commodity that we have today. So you can see here some of the smaller seeded varieties and, um, and others that are, that are coming along would definitely help in that regard. <coughs> looking now at Tough Runner 727, one of the main reasons we released this variety was because of its disease resistance. So if you look at the disease management area here, it's moderate resistance to spotted wilt, uh, very good resistance to white mold, and moderate resistance to leaf spot. So this is one of those varieties that could save a little bit in your fungicide bill with the right management characteristics if you have good rotation and, um, and low risk situations according to peanut RX. 727 would be a candidate that you could look at for reducing your fungicide bill some in those situations. Looking a little bit about at the um, characteristics of it uh, compared to Georgia 6G. In about 61% of the 49 tests where we had those two compared over about a five year period, it was equal to or greater than Georgia 6G. Quite similar yields in the Florida tests, quite similar grades also in the Florida tests, a little bit smaller seed size than Georgia 6G, but not a lot. Similar sort of scenario with in 22 tests compared to Florida 07, it was very similar in yield overall. In about 60% of the tests, it was equal to a greater yield, uh, quite a bit better in grade than Fardo 07, and a little bit smaller seed size. Looking out the 511, this is our, our latest release. It has um, quite a lot of seed out there. Again, most of that seed will be in, in uh, seed production again. 
but there is there will be some out there in terms of registered seed production. It's a large seeded runner, has very good spot, very good um, TSMK and pod yield, medium maturity about 140 days uh, on average in under irrigation. And it has moderate resistance to spotted wilt. White mold it has quite good resistance. It's probably equal to uh, 727 in terms of its white mold resistance, but it is more susceptible to leaf spot. So for that reason, we would recommend growers uh, making sure that they use a, a systemic and protective fungicides uh, in, in with this variety. So it's more suited to high management situations where you have those, um, those good fungicides that you're using for both leaf spot and white mold control. So intense, under intensive management, it's done very well. And the yields show that uh, compared to Georgia 6G, we actually have 99 tests comparing these two and about 61% of those tests, it was equal to or greater than Georgia 6G and a slight um, average yield increase there. Just a slight dip in grade, about one point difference there. And similar in seed size, not just a little bit bigger. Similar with Florida 07, we had 26 tests comparing those two cultivars and 92% um, of the tests, it was equal to or greater than Florida 07 in terms of grade in terms of yield and better in grade as well. And again, you see a little bit of bump in seed size there. And this is just to show quickly the certified seed acreage of these varieties. Um, there's anywhere from uh, 4,000 to 5,000 uh, acres of certified seed grown in 2014 with those and about 400 acres of the 511. And you can see where they stacked up. Those are the disease <coughs> index for So this is a, a really good tool that is put together by Florida, Georgia, Alabama, um, in Mississippi, a good way to gauge the resistance of the varieties to these diseases. Now, a little bit of talk about hyaluric. I'll just show you quickly what the hyaluric trait means. We compare a normal lake variety in this dark line here and a hyaluric variety in this shaded line down here. In terms of when they become rancid or when we taste that rancidity in the peanut, it takes about um, four weeks for a normal lake peanut to begin to taste rancid but it takes 32 weeks from, for a hyaluric peanut to become, to taste rancid. So that's why the industry is really, really interested in this sort of technology and why we're pushing hard in the breeding programs to get it into the varieties. And this was on a, a preparation where they boil the peanuts in shell, and this is when rancidity occurs the most quickly. But that's why we want the hyaluric trait so um, badly. The, the total certified seed acreage um, had about 16% hyaluric varieties in it this year, and it's about 10% last year, so it's gradually creeping up. I think as these new varieties come out, we're going to see better, better yield and grade performance. So we'll see more and more hyaluric varieties in the market as time goes by. With that, I'll close and 